In cultures from all over the world, we find deities, creatures, heroes, or objects in nature that is the cause of thunder and lightning. Thunder, storms, and lightning is something powerful that comes with such enormous force. It has the capacity to destruct, devastate, and defeat almost everything in its way, and it's not a wonder why so many cultures have myths explaining the origin of thunder and lightning. The deity of thunder is sometimes also the god of war and violence, like Seth in the ancient Egyptian pantheon, or a vengeful warrior like Sudika Umbambi from the Ambundu culture of Angola. And sometimes it's also the god of agriculture, like Thor in the Norse mythology, or a powerful animal like Thunderbird of indigenous North American cultures. War and violence makes as much sense as magic in agriculture, as thunders both are violent, mystic, and comes with the rains that brings harvest. I am going to talk about the three latter, as they come from very different myths and originate from different places. How are they different from each other, and how have their cultures shaped the different myths? Indigenous societies of North America stretch all over the continent. And even though some things are shared, they are unique, different and have their own cultures and beliefs. One thing that is reoccurring in many Native American cultures from the East Coast to the West and up to Alaska is the Thunderbird. Different depictions of the Thunderbird have been found in engravings, carvings and paintings all over the North American continent. The Thunderbird is an essential figure in the Native American mythology, representing the nature's forces of storm, lightning and thunder. It is often said to protect humans from evil spirits and different tribes have different stories about the enormous feathered creature. The Thunderbird is a symbol of power and brings the storms and the rains. Sometimes it is for good times to help the crops, and sometimes it is destructive strong winds and floods and fire caused by lightning. The myth talked about the thunder that sounds when the thunderbird flaps its powerful wings, and the lightning created when the bird opens its eyes and beak. It is sometimes said that the thunderbird is so large that it can carry a big whale in its talons. The Ojibwe people talk about how the Thunderbird fight underwater spirits. Their tradition also say that the Thunderbird is responsible for punishing humans who break moral rules. The Ojibwe say that the bird was created by Nana Bushu, the cultural hero, high spirit and trickster we have talked about earlier in this class. And that the bird lives in the four directions and migrates to Ojibwe lands during the spring with other birds. They stay until the fall when the most dangerous season for the underwater spirit has passed. And then they migrate south with the other birds. Many knows about the Viking god Thor especially after the many movies featuring the god in the movies about the Marvel Universe. Thor is the Norse god of thunder, the sky and the agriculture. He is the son of the head of the Norse pantheon, Odin, and Jord, a giantess and the personification of earth. Jord is the Swedish word for earth and the soil. So a more soothing name for a mythological mother is hard to find if you ask me. Thor is known as the defender of Asgard and Midgard, the realms of the gods and the humans. In Scandinavian languages, the Norse god are called Asa Gudar, the Asa gods. So Asgard is the garden of the Asa gods, and Midgard is the garden in the middle of Asgard and Hel, the world of the dead. Thor's most known attributes are Mjolnir, the mighty hammer and his chariot drawn by goats. Another thing Thor is famous for is his massive strength. 
He is the only one that can pick up Mjolnir, and when he strikes his hammer, the sky is filled with the sound of thunder and lit up by lightning. There are many myths about Thor's adventures and conquest, and many of them depicts a god that rushes into battle with his hammer held high and seldom resort to alternatives to violence and death. His strength, short temper and reliability are the most common personalities in these stories. Even if he would be outsmarted or tricked, his past triumphs and future victories makes up for it. Sometimes the myth is a bit comical, like the one on when Thor lost his hammer. The Thrym Skrida poem from the Poetic Edda tells how the giant Thrym stole Thor's hammer Mjolnir and hid it deep underground. Without his hammer, the worlds and the gods were under threat. Loki, usually so sly and treacherous, this time wanted to help and so he went to Thurim and asked him what he wanted in exchange for the hammer. Thurim asked to marry Freya. Freya said no and was so angry that the whole of Asgard shook. The gods put their heads together to come up with a solution. Heimdall suggested that they should accept the giant's condition, but that Thor should disguise himself in a wedding dress, wear Freya's necklace Breezing Garmen and go there in her place. Now it was Thor's turn to be angry. He did not want to dress into women's clothes. But the gods managed to convince him and Loki went with him as a bridesmaid. They arrived in Jotunheim, the realm of the giants, during a thunderstorm and joined in a huge feast with lots of food. Thrym was surprised to see Freya consume an ox, eight salmon and a whole barrel of mead. Quick thinking, Loki explained that Freya had been longing for the giant so much that she had not eaten for eight days. When Thrym then tried to kiss Freya, the giant recoiled from the bride's terrified look. Loki quickly explained that this was because she had not been able to sleep for eight nights. Then Mjolnir was retrieved from underground and placed in the lap of the bride as a customary gift when getting married. But then Thor revealed himself and crushed the skulls of all the giants with his hammer. The world of the gods was saved. Thor was not only considered a war champion and protector from storms, it was also common for people to turn to Thor for help with domestic and agriculture chores. Thor was a Norse god of the common man. He was strong, reliable and helpful. He did not always win, but he endured and did not give up. Just as many may picture the medieval Norse people. Last, we have the story of Sudika Mbambi, the cause of thunder according to the Mbundu people of Angola. Sudika Mbambi is told to be a strong hero, just as his twin brother Kabudun Gulu. They were the sons of the dad Kimanausi, a feared warrior hero, and his wife Amundu, who is the daughter of the sun and the moon. At the time of his birth, the mother heard a voice from inside her womb. It was Sudika Umbambi announcing that he was going to come out. But he also announced that before him, the mother would birth his knife, his sword, his staff and a klembe, a special plant. At his birth, Sudika Umbambi also told his mother his name. Soon after, Sudika Mumbambi's twin brother were born in the same spectacular way, announcing his birth and being born with the same belongings and also naming himself. The twins were born shortly after monsters called Makishi had attacked and destroyed their home and also killing their grandpa. Sudika Mumbambi decided to avenge his grandpa 
so he asked his brother to stay and watch his parents and his plan while he pursued the monsters responsible for the tragic events. While on his path to seek out the Makishi, Sudika Mumbambi meets the Kipalende, a supernatural being. After Sudika Mumbambi tells the Kipalendes about his quest, they decide to join him. With the help of the Kipalendes, young Sudika Mbambi finds and destroys the Makishi after what most probably was a fierce battle. And afterwards, Sudika Mbambi is given a wife by an old woman. How and why is not clear in this story, but maybe the old woman was wronged by the Makishi too and gave away her daughter as a token of gratitude towards the still fairly newborn boy. I must say that the age difference is a bit alarming, but nothing that is explained or justified in this myth. After this event, the Kipalendes for some reason decided that they want the wife. So they betray Sudike Mumbambi by throwing him into a hole in the ground and disappearing with his wife, leaving Sudike Mumbambi to his fate. Inside the hole, Sudike Mumbambi finds a path that leads down to the realm of Kalunga, where Kalunga Ngumba rules. Kalunga, according to some myths, is the creator and in some the god of the underworld. In this context, the later explanation seems more reasonable. Brave Sudika Mbambi, who just lost his wife, does not let an opportunity go to waste, so he asks Kalunga for his daughter's hand in marriage. Kalunga agrees, but on the terms that Sudika Mbambi needs to do some tasks for Kalunga before he can marry his daughter. The first thing for Sudika Mbambi is to rescue Kalunga's daughter from the great serpent Kinioka Kiatumba. Of course, Sudika Mbambi managed to kill the serpent and free the daughter. So Kalunga gives him a second task and it is to kill the powerful crocodile Kimbiji Kia Malenda, the master of the underworld abyss. In the even battle between the two, the strong crocodile managed to pull Sudika Mbambi into the water and swallows him whole. Back home, the twin brother Kabundungulu realizes that something is wrong because he noticed that Sudika Mbambi's kilembe, the plant, has withered. So he sets out to find his brother and rescue him. Kabundungulu managed to trace his brother to the underworld and finds the crocodile. He attacks the powerful beast and managed to cut it open and bring Sudika Mbambi back to life. After the crocodile is dead, Kalunga honors his promise and lets Sudika Mbambi marry his daughter. One could think that the story ends here but there is still one wrongdoing that needs to be settled. Remember the Kipalendes? Sudika Mbambi and his brother decides to avenge the betrayal and goes out to find the supernatural beings. And once the two mighty brothers find the Kipalendes, they are an easy match and Sudika Mbambi gets his revenge and his first wife back. But Sudika Mbambi now has two wives and since Kabundugulu as none, he asks Sudika Mbambi if he can have one of his. But when Sudika Mbambi says no, the two brothers start to fight. And the fight is long, because the two are twins and therefore equal, powerful and strong, so no one can win. And after a while, they call a truce and decide to go separate ways. Sudika Mbambi goes to the east and Kabundungulu goes to the west. But the two brothers also ascend to the heaven, where Sudika Mbambi becomes the thunder and his brother its echo. So when you hear the thunder in the sky, it is Sudika Mbambi and Kabudungulu talking to each other. Thunderbird, Thor and Sudika Mbambi are not all gods. In fact, Thor is the only god between them, even though Thunderbird is considered as a god 
by some Native American cultures and Sudika Mbambi is probably a semi-god. But they are all the causes of thunder, lightning and storms and they reflect the cultures they derive from. The Native Americans in general have myths that involve animals. Often do they cooperate and help the humans and live in the nature among them. Native Americans have a special relationship with the nature and have a tradition of coexisting with it. The people of Scandinavia in the medieval times have the reputation of the fierce Vikings that only sought fights and glory. And yes, many crossed oceans, pillaged, plundered and violated the people they attacked. But most of them were farmers that stayed in their homelands and tried to live off the lands. Thor was not only the god of thunder and a strong and violent brute, he was also every man's god that they turned to. In the stories of Thor, he was very much like them, struggling with keeping his hammer to himself and experienced trials. And he always persevered, and therefore Thor was someone they looked up to and such a popular god. As for the Umbundu people, they were farmers. They lived off what they could grow and the animals they had. The land that was later to be Angola had many tribes and maybe that is where the Kepalendes origin. Strangers that can't be trusted. In the myth about Sudika Mbambi, the monsters were animals that lives where the Mundu people live, threatening them and their livestock. Writing this, I wonder how a meeting between these characters would turn out. I suppose Thunderbird would try to help Sudika and Bambi killing off some monsters while Thor would feel threatened by the young strong little boy and they might get into a violent fight and Thunderbird would then punish them for their bad moral actions or maybe they would all get along. No matter the outcome I'm sure the skies would roar and thunder.